Good morning guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I'm here with my good mate Scott Mason from Southern Sky Images and we at Uluru AS Rock for the second uh, leg of our Red Desert trip. What yeah. are we doing? Uh, we're starting here, we're going to uh, visit Uluru, Kartajuta, uh, which is also known as the Olgas. And then um, we're going to hit the Fink, Fink Gorge National Park which is uh, beautiful. Yes, a trip which cut, uh, got cut short for me last time with the Defender, so mechanical issues, so I didn't make it through and I'm really looking forward uh, this time to cross it. We've both been here in 2016 and by chance, what happened? Actually, it's a bit of a funny story. So um, I happened to be up here in July, uh, back in 2016, a few years ago, and uh, I was doing a family trip and uh, where were we? Uh, birthday waterhole, uh, yeah. waterhole um, up in the West McDonnell Ranges and I'm driving back to camp and uh, coming the other way is a white Defender. Well I know that car. Fair enough it was Stefan so um, just a chance meeting. Yeah so yeah. this time not a chance meeting but um, we're definitely going to hit it aren't we. Most of the area around Alice Springs up to Uluru and Katachuda is very touristy and very well developed. So you really have to look around to find something where you can actually use four wheel drive. The Fink Gorge is one of that places and we now heading in from the southern side. The Fink River which uh, flows through the gorge has long been cited as the oldest river in the world. At most times the river is a string of water holes. And only in rare occurrences, when the river floods, it becomes a raging torrent. I personally can't get enough of these rock formations, which change the color depending on the time of the day. If you combine this with the water holes of the Fink River, for me, that's just paradise. The indigenous name of the Fink River is Lara Pinta. A good night's sleep in my stretcher tent, I got woken to a serenade uh, from a pack of dingoes. Absolutely beautiful. Hey guys, I think we all agree campfire is the best thing you can have, especially if you're on the beach or in sand like here. However, it's not a good idea to just cover the fire with sand uh, as a means of extinguishing because really it's going to keep on smoldering underneath the sand for ages and if you then have someone walking along it barefoot or so, it can uh, cause quite some nasty burns. And that obviously is especially important if you are in, in areas which are highly frequented somewhere on the beach. Um, make sure that you always use some water to extinguish the coals. And then the last thing is really um, to cover it with sand. Monday today after we camped yesterday at the Fink River but outside the National Park we um, ventured into the National Park now I have to say that's 
one of my favorite places I think gorge here in the red center it, it, it's absolutely stunning the light on these red cliffs um, with the water underneath and the perfect reflection in it absolutely stunning so yeah i love it we'll see what campground we find today i haven't been to this end yet so yeah looking forward to continue on and see what we discover today This here is the old Boggy Hole Police Station. The Boggy Hole Police Station was established in 1889 by William Henry Wilshire. He was the first Australian police officer who was tried for murder of Aborigine people in 1891. Tuesday morning around 10.15 we are in the Fink Gorge at Boggy Hole campground. A bit busier than last time here. Three other people um, camping here. We had a couple of parties coming through. Not that much water here. While the Boggy Hole has water it's yeah very murky and um, really not that much so we decided to head out of the Fink Gorge today and go to Palm Valley. Scott and myself decided to split up for the day. I hadn't seen the Palm Valley and uh, Scott has been there two years ago and he was keen to see Owen Springs. So I headed for one night to Palm Valley while Scott and uh, Dakota uh, went to Owen Springs. The Palm Valley is also part of the Fink Gorge National Park. It is northwest of the Boggy Hole, but you need to go back to Hermansburg and then from there head in towards the Palm Valley. The Palm Valley is a maze of incredible sandstone amphitheaters, pinnacles and gorges. It is also home of the red cabbage palm, which gave the valley its name. a good little camping area with a few trees and shady sites. Uh, it also has showers and toilets. It uh, can be fairly dusty if there is wind, so take that into account when you choose your campsite. If you continue on past the campground, the road turns into a four-wheel drive track only and that leads you deep into the palm valley and towards the location of the actual um, palms. Good morning, Wednesday morning. I'm just leaving the Palm Valley. I split up with uh, Scotty yesterday and I'm glad I did. Uh, absolutely stunning. I mean, a bit touristy, but um, the landscape and so on, whew, what a rip up. Absolutely loved it. Now I'm heading out of the Palm Valley and pretty much um, will be doing the Lara Pinta loop. The Hermansburg mission was established in 1877 at a site sacred for the local Aranda people, called Nantaria, which was associated with the Aranda Ratapa dreaming. Two German missionaries formed the mission and named it after Hermansburg in Germany where they trained. They arrived with 37 horses, 20 cattle and nearly 2,000 sheep, 5 dogs and chickens. The first buildings were constructed in late June 1877, made from wood and reed grass. By August they also had a stockyard, kitchen and living quarters. They realized quickly that communication with the local community was difficult due to the language barrier. So the missionaries promptly learned the errant language and developed a 54-page dictionary which was published in 1890. With a fluctuating population, 
there were always around 100 people living at the mission. And it was the only Australian mission at the start of the 20th century where the population grew through natural increase. From 1894 to 1922, Carl Strelo and his wife Frieda took over the mission, which by then was plagued with drought and growing racial tension. There's a very interesting book about Carl Strelo's son, T.J.H. Strelo, which is called Broken Song. Hermansburg is also well known for its distinct watercolor landscape artworks, which is created by the local indigenous artists. One of the best known artists is Albert Namachira. So if you are in the area and do the Lara Pinta loop, make sure you check out the Hermansburg Historic Precinct. It is well worth a visit in my opinion. After Hermansburg I continued the Namachira loop and had a quick look at the Red Bank Gorge. It is hard to accurately describe how stunning and unique the landscape here in the Red Center is. It is absolutely beautiful. As I wasn't required to be in Alice Springs for another day, I decided to have one more night out in the bush and I found an absolutely gorgeous spot right next to the Fink River. Remember you and I would always find somewhere to hide when we were kids so we could see and hear the water run. The river's gonna cry when you're gone. Welcome to my Riverside homestead. Seems like time as a wave passing by and leave a mark in our marks to turn the memories. River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're Next to me camped an alternative French couple which were well traveled and uh, we spent together the night around the campfire and a lot of good travel stories were shared. It was an awesome night. Gonna cry when you're gone, gone, 